What's up and welcome to Ahead of the Curve. This is your host, Jonathan Gellner, and thank you so much for joining us today. This podcast is powered by Stick and Ball TV, the baseball and softball streaming platform. Stick and Ball TV is a baseball-focused streaming platform featuring the best coaches, players, and premium brands in baseball today. Stick and Ball TV creates and curates baseball training content, on-brand partner content, and original lifestyle content, and publishes globally across their web, iOS, and Android apps. Check them out at stickandball.tv or on the Stick and Ball TV mobile app. Today's guest is Brian Green, head baseball coach at Washington State University. Brian is one of the best hitting guys in the country, and we were lucky enough to have him on this fall. And on this episode, we talk about flipping the switch into free season, how to bucket pitchers in season, and two-strike approach. Here is Brian Green. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, what what you guys are doing. Uh, you talked about the approach with your uh, with your last third, and I want to know more about, you know, how you guys are working that into. You know, you said when they come back January fifteenth, they need to be ready. And so, what was your process during? I, I would consider that almost preseason, just because you guys are yeah. going to have what like less than a month to be able to get ready. So, what did that ramp up period look like? You, you mentioned switching from mechanics and flipping the switch to okay you know we're still we'll still work on what we need to work on and uh and all that but we also need to worry about what the pitcher's doing now and so i'd love to hear just your process of teaching that side of things and then we'll go as as deep into it as you want to yeah and it really does change and for example you know when we're in our mechanical phase um it's batting practice, there's three stations in the cage. Obviously we're fortunate enough to have a great indoor, but, um, you know, there's a, Hey, it's a left on left. It's a left on right. Uh, it's a slow pitch or it's a fastball. But when we're in mechanics, we're just hit, get repetitions of left on, you know, get a left-handed breaking ball, get a right-handed breaking ball, get a fastball. When we, when we start talking approach and we really dive into it, I mean, we, we obviously have our offensive approach as a team, um, that we, our hitters are a very stock basic approach. We have a basic understanding in, in bucket pitchers uh, in terms of just who they are. But I think where you can really train approach is, and I mentioned this a little earlier, but is you start training, for example, um, give your guys repetition of, okay, left on left breaking ball. Again, is it two strikes? Is it neutral count? Or is it an OL pitch that he's sitting on where he's going to pull one of them? You hit one in the middle and hit one of the opposite side. But then also, you know, are you giving him an opportunity to visually see what's the chase slider that they're going to throw you? Give your hitters repetitions of, of pitches to not swing at either. Something as simple as set up a slider left on left or a, a right on right, you know, set up in the middle, let that thing start middle and move to the outer half or, excuse me, off the plate. That's a ball. Give your eyes the amount, your time to train that because obviously we're not going to be swinging at that early in middle counts, but two strikes, you know, when you're trying to protect. Um, so that that would be an approach standpoint that I would, we, at that point, we move into um, practicing how to hit a change up. At that point, we move into double machines, you know, one in front, one behind, two drops, only one comes out and practicing, you know, a guy's 94 and he's got a, a 78 mile an hour curveball and there's a big differential and then practicing and seeing if our hitters, you know, can, Hey, can you go on site on off speed timing and react to that fastball? Or do you need to be the guy that needs to be on that fastball and you can react to the off speed timing? Those are the approach things that I think that where we really jump into from uh, a drill standpoint where you're taking the same thing that you were doing mechanically but you're just changing the mindset. Uh, you pull out your charts and you're, you're, you're charting control in the zone percentages. Uh, and then this can be done without track, man. I mean, in the cage, you know, you've got sure. plates that are painted and mm-hmm. Hey, we're going to sit. Oh, Oh, right now on a right on right breaking ball. Oh, Oh, this team loves to throw it. We're going to sit on it. Okay. It's got to start at your left shoulder if you're right on right, and it's got to dump into the middle of the plate. So if it starts middle and moves out, you got to leave it. And then, you know, you can chart that. And so then, that becomes a, a station that we do on how to sit on pitches, you know, and because certainly teams pattern or, or pitchers pattern, you know, whether he's a big velo guy or a soft guy. So um, those are some of the things that we will do in the cage um, that can replicate or help on, on approach. 
and then obviously, you know, live out on the field, um, moving into just timings. We, we hit with machines like crazy. I believe in them. Um, I believe in machines because I think they can impact your timing. So we will do things yeah. like, um, lift, lift your leg here, lift your leg here, and then don't lift your leg until the ball is out of the chute. So you get to understand, you know, when I need to really pick up early or pick up late. If, and that sure. really, what that equates to is, am I sitting hard or sitting soft? Mm-hmm. So, um, and those are all things during the, really the last month of the season that those are what our practices look like. And, but again, uh, not again, but what I believe is in all of those things that I said, you've got your cage work, you've got your timing work, but I think there has to be a system of, of repetitive consistency. I believe that you start with your, your BP round in August. And I think you do it until June. Um, and then where you different is your early work or your sure. post work. I like that because it gives me the opportunity, gives us the opportunity to, you know, if we're struggling, if we're scuffling, um, your typical, you know, week two and a half blues where all your hitters are early. Um, you can back them up and everybody can do the same thing. And there's an adjustment to be had as a team. I like doing that. That's just something that I found. No, and that's having a feel for your team too. And something that, you know, you've, I don't, I mean this in the, in a good way, you've been doing this a long time and been able to kind of see, okay, this, this may hit here. I'm not going to freak out, but I'm, I'm going to expect it and, and then have an answer for it when, when that time comes. I love that. That's yeah, hard to fun. do as a hitting coach. It's very hard to do in it, but it's also, you know, there's a comfort and predictability um, and there's a confidence in it. You know, our coaches laugh. It, it, it happened again. It happened last year. It happened the year before it happened in New Mexico state. It's almost like timetable, just automatic that I tend to blow up on the guys like week three and beep of practice because everybody's early and jerking the ball. And we, then we go to the change up machine and it's like, it, it's so predictable. So there's two things with that. One, I'm okay with it because we've had success offensively. Uh, but, but two, I have to evaluate, well, okay, what are you doing? Cause you know, your guys are coming back early a lot. Is that normal uh, or not? But we've been able to adjust out of that pretty quickly before our season start. We've, we've had some pretty good starts. So, um, so we've maintained our, our system, but, I think you have to look at all the factors that go into that. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I love that. And so you mentioned, you know, bucketing pitchers. And I, I, I find that this is a really interesting concept. And it's probably something that, that you know, the when you say old school, like they had to do because they didn't have <laughs> track man. And right. I would love to just like you if speaking to amateur coaches and you don't have to go into, you know, it really in depth. Uh, synergy reports from the Pac-12 guys, uh, but I would love to hear just some advice that you would have for if if someone's like, man, I would love to do that, but where do I start, or what are some different you know different buckets that you would have that you wouldn't mind sharing with us? Because I would love to hear that. Yeah, um, I think it's not using technology wise, but just you know being baseball coaches at you know as a as a high school coach, uh, you know bucket your bucket the opposing pitcher into into three guys uh or into three types of pitchers because essentially you really can do that um you can regardless of level whatever your level says is this uh you know who's a power guy you know at the at the junior varsity level in high school is that 86 um you know is it 90 at the high school level i know velocities are just going crazy but you know for example but just you know what's a power guy you know, at the pack level, probably 94 um, or high spin rate where the ball really jumps on you. But we just I like to jump it for simplicity for my brain and for our players brains. But just um, taking pitchers and essentially jumping them into three. You've got essentially a power guy. You've essentially got a mixer and you've essentially got a, a specialist. Um starting with the specialist, you know, the the left hander from here or, you know, the right handed sub guy or or a guy mm-hmm. who might be over the top, but he's only on one side of the plate. Um, the guy you can box adjust on, you know, sure. um, cause they do exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and then essentially after that, you've basically two types of pitchers. You've got a mixer and you got a power guy. And the difference being, you know, the mixer loves his breaking ball. Hello, neutral pitches backwards, big spot. He's, you're getting the off speed of the secondary pitch. Sure. The power guy is, is, you know, the neutral count is, is going with the fastball and oh, oh he's getting ahead with it. Um, and that can also be based on the, the guy across the dugout, and, you know, the pitching coach, especially sure. at the high school level. If he's controlling right. everything, you can scheme against him. But 
But I think more importantly is just that sounds great, but then more importantly is just how do you how do you compete against those guys? Well, it really just goes right. into scheme and understanding if you're facing a, a mixer, for example, you, know, you sit soft, you know, with two strikes. They gotta practice it. That that goes into that machine thing that I talked about right. in terms of yeah. let's 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 breaking ball time and react to fastball, see if you can do it. But you know, if you're gonna get that pitch early, middle, and probably late mixer. Um, don't be surprised because that's what all of us, especially at the high school level, you know, we see so much of it is, you know, guys have rhythm and they're, they're flowing and boom. And a guy throws you a breaking ball and, then, and sure. you just freeze. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think if you can, as a hitting coach, you know, just bucket two or three guys that you're going to see generalizing, you know, and for me, it's, that's what it is. Power mix specialist. Oh, I love that. The, the same side right-handed sinker guy with the change, the lefty can box adjust, you know, or the right-hander or the right-hander maybe backs off because it's all same side. You got to pull. Um, mm-hmm. But then more importantly is, is give the, give our players a reps. Um, that's the approach part, you know, um, yep. heavy on the mixer, heavy on the power, but then occasionally the specialist guy, but um, sure. that that's how my brain works. And, and mm-hmm. I think it, I think it's very easy for a hitter to, for to conceptualize that and then as a coach just give them the reps well uh, i think that that would help with you know you hear okay if we're going to game plan against this guy we want to first start with our strengths and then understand what he's going to try and do so what you're doing is setting up those situations and saying okay how can we win against this with what you've got and i think that's really good instead of going hey he's going to you know he's going to bust you in with this and then you're going to see this right here and then he's going to go up and then he's going to go down and they're like what (laughs) <laughs> and That's instead right. of, you know instead of saying that you're just like okay so here's here's kind of game plan against this guy let's see you know how where we're at with this and then let's start to tick away at okay where do we feel the most comfortable versus a guy that's like this which i think has a ton of value that's right and that that's exactly right and then and then if you understand that in, in my opinion and you know whether you're at a college team with a big roster or a high school team with a limited one there there is a guy who's maybe a better breaking ball hitter, or there is a guy who's maybe sure, a better yeah. fastball hitter. That's and, you know, point. that, that certainly determines your lineup decisions too, um, on that guy you're facing. And you don't need track man to do that. And you don't need video to do it. And if you can have it, that's great. Uh, but I do think that there's a lot of power and value in, um, your hitters knowing when a guy comes into the game and you've got a scouting report and it just says mixer. And here's why it's mm-hmm. 60% breaking ball. Boom. I know what that is. Sure. That's most guys right now <laughs> yeah like yeah just That's power breaking ball. balls yeah man yeah. so uh one of the things that that i think gets discussed a lot and you you mentioned the clarity piece and that's you know let's talk count awareness but especially you know two strike approach and i jeff leach posted a a tweet about it i don't, I don't know if you know jeff or not but i was he's got like ten thousand followers or, or whatever and he said hey what was your true stri- two strike approach and did it work and I was reading through and I don't know if there was one like, that was common, a commonality between, you know, the hundred people that, that responded, it was like 17 different things. And I was just blown away. And so I, I you know, how, do you, do you, I, I don't know what you guys do, but I'd love to hear. Yeah, we absolutely do. Um, I think two strike hitting, I, I made, I'm sure I heard it somewhere, uh, but it's just, it's a philosophy of mine, but, uh, and this maybe sounds a little goofy, uh, but at the college level, two strike hitting is going to promote power production. Um, and I believe that, um, I think back to when I was a player in high school and I just, and <laughs> I had no power, but I think back to when I got two thirds or three quarters of the way through my senior year in high school and I hadn't struck out yet. Um, you know, what was my response to that? Well, I started chasing that big zero. I'm not going to strike out this year. I'm going to put that on. I'm not going to strike out. So what did I end up doing? Well, I started expanding in the first two pitches. Um, so it would have been okay to strike out every now and then. I probably would have been a better hitter. But more importantly is just I think when our hitters understand or have confidence in, look, two strikes is back there. It's tough. Um, but I've got a plan. I know I'm going to sit hard or sit soft. I know I'm going to move up on the plate or not. I know, I know I'm going to choke up if I need to. Uh, but that back there is is going to be competitive. So how do we teach two strike hitting? I've certainly changed on this. We've all heard all the mechanical adjustments Get on the plate, choke up, get spread out, get your foot down early, no stride. We've all, we've all heard all of those things where I am right now is 
you're going to adjust, make it be yours. Here are some ways that can be effective for you to play a little bit more defense. And we just say play defense. Um, I did just, that's what you'll hear me yelling in the dug. I say, Hey, good defense here. Play D put the ball mm-hmm. in play. Um, we're not in the big leagues. We're in college baseball or we're in high school baseball. Right. You know, we, we don't matter. 10 teams field 980 in college or 15, maybe now. And it's like, you don't put the ball in play. Uh, and the pro ball, it doesn't make any sense to hit a weak ground ball on the opposite side, you know, sure. given what they're doing now, but it does in college and high school. So mm-hmm. that's where I've moved into is here are some strategies for you. Let me give you a month. You tell me what you want to do. Coach, I think I'm just going to widen up just a hair. I think I'm going to choke up just a hair. I think I'm going to move up on the plate. I'm going to go no stride. I'm going to get the foot down early. And it's theirs and they get to own it. And that, I think that's really important. I learned that um, the first time that as a hitting coach, which was a lifelong goal to have more walks than strikeouts was at New Mexico state. And we had the, you know, Cruz is a nice place to be a hitting coach. You can be really smart there. And, um, but we had, I think it was 320 walks and 305 strikeouts. And that was not including 110 hit by pitch. So we, we led oh, the country in on base. Per- yeah. I mean, we led the country in on base percentage. It was awesome. But um, that's in that year was 2019. That was Gonzalez and that, and that was um, Joey. And we had great offense, Tristan Peterson, a couple of Americans. Sure. Um, but it was at that point where guys really owned their two strike approach. And so that's what we do here. It's what I believe in. But I think you have to have one. And I think you can't just say, figure it out. I think you need to give you guys some strategies. I think you need to, for example, in the fall when we're in the mechanical phase, those three things that I mentioned, but literally widen up or no stride or foot down early. Uh, those three things are actually a T drill and they get reps in five, five, five. And, you know, let's practice some feel of which one's more comfortable for you. Cause you do have to adjust. You have to, you have to make some, some version in my opinion of being defensive and be able to play defense. So, um, okay. so it's important to me. And then from there we practice how to sit soft, how to sit hard, um, and, and can you do that? But we're, we're going to have one and we practice it a lot. Um, I think if you do that, then it gives you a much greater confidence. Oh, oh, or with one strike in terms of not expanding. And if we don't expand, we got a chance to drive the baseball. So, um, sure. that's the philosophy that we give with our guys. And then I'll cut up videos of really good two strike hitting teams across the country and show them here's what it looks like. And everybody's quiet, defensive right. and, you know, you, you've moved your contact point back into the middle of your body. And and then I think a really, really, really big key for two strike hitting is you have to give your players the confidence that they're not going to get jammed. Right. You got to give them yeah. heavy reps of a ball in off on their hands. Mm. Um, and they need it in toss and they need it in tees. Because if they know that they can get there, then they're not going to be as apt to be early. And then if you make your guys maybe get hit by a pitch and they can't move, then you got maybe you got something rolling there. <laughs> yeah, no, like you guys didn't move. At, I'm sure you guys still don't, but it's part of that toughness piece. Uh, anything you can do to get on base for your team, I, I love that. And you know, speaking of, of two strike approach, I I saw somebody posted on Twitter a little while back, maybe a couple weeks ago. Uh, Harper changed his a little bit, and I was like, man, like. I wonder what his, I don't, you know, he, so he went like from full leg kick, like giddy up, let's go to like foot down early and kind of just show his hands. And I was like, I, I, I wonder what his two strike, like if that led to success, you know? And, and so I, I, the, the guy's point was, Hey, we should do this. And so I went back and looked and, and Harper's two strike numbers actually went down this year when he hmm. was doing that. So I was like, okay, so this isn't exactly a, a one size fits all thing. And, and I'm not going to sit here until Harper. No hit, question. But, but to tell, you know, to tell all, all of our guys, we need to do this because this worked for him. And, and it actually, we, after further research, it, it, it didn't, I guess, uh, based on the numbers, but you know, it's just, I, I love that approach of, Hey man, like, do you have a ton of, swing, of strikeouts and swing and miss? Then yeah. Like there needs to be a change. Do you have an even or even better count? And then it's like, I'm not do your thing, man. Like 100%. I love that. Yeah. And, you know, and even in, in rewarding players, um, you know, we had our, our Christmas party with our team uh, last week and, you know, we have ratio winners uh, for the fall, the ratio champs. I love um, that. We have on-base percentage champs and, but, you know, it is important. And if you, 
if we're going to be a real offense and you're going to be a real offensive player, then you need to live one-to-one in college. And the good ones do, the great ones do. Um, and the guys you want to hit 350 or better, or you want to chase 400 and you know, you need to be plus. Um, so you can't do that without a two strike approach because you're not going to drive your walks. So, you know, cause the, the days of just pitch counting and the, you know, sure. you got to yeah. have a two strike approach to drive pitch count. I think for sure. No, definitely. So I've got a couple more questions before you go. And these are a little bit more of quick hitters and digging into a little bit of what you like. And then, you know, so, some stuff that your players like to do at practice, but what's something that uh, you've learned lately that has gotten you excited and you're, you're digging more into uh, leadership, um, okay. leadership, not only with the coaches, but leadership techniques with the players, uh, developing leadership um, with our uh, leadership council, uh, being better at, at um, giving our players uh, the opportunity to be better leaders. You know, I think we all bitch about bad leadership when we have bad teams. I, that is our responsibility, you know, and good leadership a lot of times is, is experience and, and, and guys who have had success, but that's really uh, exciting to me right now. So I I'm spending a lot of my time um, investing in it. I'm a part of a, a few leadership groups, not only that we bring in house, but I go out house or <laughs> I go out um, with a green beret and a, <laughs> an admiral and a, and it's really fun for me because um, I get to come back and what I, what you find is, and I'm studying business leadership because it's all the same, you know, it's, it's group dynamics. It's, it's senior staff uh, at the executive level, you know, down to the managerial level and, and down onto the entry level. And that's what we're doing here too. So that's got me excited. No, that's great. What is something that you used to believe strongly in, and you've either recently changed your mind about or you're you've veered off in a different direction uh probably two things number one it would be mechanics uh and then number two uh would be the the desire to inform um you know and i i I just i found myself uh mechanics are critical and we teach mechanics don't get me wrong i'm very mechanical but just i used to believe that you had to be very complex and, and very precise in what and I have found that you're, we're confusing our players because I've, I'm studying our players and some personalities can handle it and some personalities I'm destroying because I'm giving them too much and their brains don't work that way. Um, so you end up only fulfilling or satisfying half of your team, 30 of your team, what, whatever happens to your roster be. So, sure. um, so mechanically, um, being over mechanical, I used to think was uh, what we were supposed to do um, into it's okay to sit back and not say anything as a coach. And it really is okay. Now I would be talking to the the guys who who we've all given lessons. You know, you grow up in an industry where you feel like you have to say something on every rep. Right. I mean, you know, uh, that's not the game of life and that's not the game of baseball. And sure. the kids come to high school and then college. And if you're not saying something on every rep, you know, so I think it's important right. that the kids know that too. Hey, silence is okay. Evaluation is okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm going to let you learn, let you fail. And, and also, I want to learn you. So I'm going to watch and I'm confident enough to sit back and watch. But I think it's right. very important that we tell our players, if we are ever going to do that, that I'm not disengaged. I'm paying sure. attention. I'm in, but I'm just watching and I'm watching because I want to get to know you better. And then we can have better conversations down the road. No, that's great. What is a drill that if you, if you went to practice tomorrow and this was on the practice play and your players would go crazy because they love it. Uh, there's probably, there's one for sure. I was going to say two. I just, I want to make sure that there's, but, uh, the double barrel drill is the, is the, the top hitter of our program. That's two machines, um, breaking ball up top, fastball underneath, Mm -hmm. um, go right here because there's guys, like I said, guys really like that drill because they can use it for what they need to work on. Um, when they cut, I'm going to sit soft, react to fastball. I'm, I'm working on two strike hitting. I'm working on hitting, I'm sitting fastball, I get the hanging breaking ball and it's a one, one count and I'm practicing just murdering that ball. Um, or I'm, I'm only sitting on breaking ball. Oh, when I see the fastball, I'm taking it. Uh, that, that's probably our most, um, our most popular drill, uh, that our guys like, uh, and then velocity. Our guys love it. Uh, Our guys, and we, (laughs) you know, it's a hundred, um, great for the swing. It quiet nice. you up, tighten you up. Let's uh, go. But we'll, oh, it's and I get in there and 
uh, I'll do it with him. And I can, the old man can touch a ball because I've understood, <laughs> I understand how to hit a ball behind my back leg sure. and create. So, but they'll swing and miss and I'll touch it and it, it, it pisses them off. So, um, oh, that's, that's but great. I got some, I, I love it. You know, I can get in there. And leave. Now, if they ask me to, Hey coach, can you actually drive a ball into the six hole? No, I, mm-hmm. my bat's too slow. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. Well, then finally, uh, I know we've, we've talked about some, some different resources that, that you've really liked with the leadership training. And if, uh, if you had the opportunity to buy the, the, the coaches listening, you know, one resource or one book, uh, what would you, what would you buy for? Them? Oh, oh, wow. Um, I, I think I would say th- I'm going to give three, um, because it's just, it's, it's, it, there's two ways going back. I think it's 30 years ago, but, uh, the mental game of baseball was 1990 introduced to me, uh, which moved to heads up baseball with Revisa. The mental game of baseball and heads up baseball are the baseball Bibles of the mental game. Um, and, and tell stories from professional baseball players. It's an absolute, it has to be on every coach's shelf. Uh, if you're a baseball coach, you need to own that. And then from a, a managerial or leadership perspective, my favorite book I've ever read was is. Uh, the Winner Within uh, by Pat Riley, uh, an incredible book. Uh, the, the journey of the Knicks and how they started, and, and the, the the build and the climb and the ascension of their program, and, and essentially um, the locker room, you know, and, and how he did it. And very fascinating because they're true stories. So oh, basically, just gave you great. three books about kind of the mental game: uh, one, sure. locker room culture, and two, uh, individual mental game stuff. But I think those three have to be on every coach's desk. I think they're just. I go back to them. Every year I open those books up and into this day right now, even with the Cougs uh, heads up baseball 2.0 is, is a textbook that we use cool. in our classroom that which we, we read it once a week in the fall. Uh, we'll go back to it in the spring, but we study it. I mean, you ask a Coug what ramp C means. They, they, they know responsibility, awareness, mission, compete, preparation. They know those things. Um, That's great. <laughs> and yeah. So, um, so those would be the three for me. That's a great question. Those are uh, very, um, they need to be on your desk. Cool. <clears throat> I've actually read the first two. I haven't read the Pat Riley book, so I'm going to have to pick it's that awesome. one up. It's awesome. Cool. Yeah, it's it's old too. It's probably 95. Uh, Even I'm better. Assuming. But it's it's when he was with the Knicks, he got from the Lakers to the Knicks. He was rebuilding the Knicks. And it's a really neat book on leadership and culture in the locker rooms. It's one of my favorites. Cool. Well, Brian, I, I appreciate your time, man. And I, I've loved... Uh, getting to connect with you and i've been looking forward to to this for you know for a while since we set a date but uh i can't thank you enough and uh i i just wanted to to give you the the mic for a moment and is you know talk to our listeners is there anything else that you'd like to tell them before you go uh say thanks to your wife and your parents and your kids Amen. if you have them but uh i mean <laughs> it is uh i'm so blessed to to be where i am in this chair i wouldn't be here without my family and uh, lost my dad last year. So, and I just, it's, it's just more of a reminder of how important family is, uh, and to love your family. Um, but, uh, if I could say anything to, to anybody listening, uh, take care of your wife and your family and your mom and your dad and, and be appreciative of what you have. Cause you never know if, uh, if they're not going to be there the next day. And for we as coaches, um, n- so many of us just wouldn't be coaches if our, if our wives or our, our partners hadn't helped us to at least work for free for a few years, uh, to be able to get into the seat that we want to get into and work in this great profession. So, uh, that would, that would be where I am today at, uh, at my age with my wife. We're going on 25 years, uh, here just next week. So we're really excited That's about wonderful. that. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. She's, uh, she's obviously got a screw loose, but I've been able to fool it for a long time. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but I'm glad you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Brian. Hey, and you, I, I do want to say, uh, you know, I've watched sure. ahead of the curve and you guys, uh, do a great job and that's, that's why I wanted to come on here to, podcasts have been great so if you're not following this uh please get out and make sure that you're following this because it's a great resource i know us as coaches we watch these all the time um you know when i'm watching a, a, a braves hitting coach uh i'm getting better so uh mm-hmm. use these resources because they're really helpful thank you for listening to ahead of the curve if you enjoyed the show please consider leaving us a rating or review wherever you are listening I also wanted to remind you that you can find the video portion at the AOTC channel on stickandball.tv. Have a great week.